So the session topic for today is how Jeremy productized his agency and sold 189 clients in two years. So Jeremy Ellens is the co-founder of Lead Quizzes. Uh, Lead Quizzes has helped garner over 4.7 million leads and answer almost 74 million questions for its many clients, including industry leaders like Neil Patel and Lewis Howes. Uh, using his background in marketing, Jeremy has grown Lead Quizzes website to over 175,000 monthly visitors. Welcome, Jeremy. Yeah, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, me too. So the, some of the things that we're going to cover in this session, and if you guys want to take the chance now to kind of chime in with what you're hoping to learn, um, we're going to cover how to niche down your product and audience so that you can create scalable marketing campaigns. Then we're going to go over some step-by-step -step directions and examples used to explode leads and sales from referrals, website traffic, email lists, cold outreach, and Facebook ads. And then last but not least, we're going to chat about the referral request email that Lead Quizzes used to generate 90268 exactly dollars in revenue. So if you guys want to chime in with a couple of things that you're hoping to learn, hoping to gain from this, and why don't we get started, Jeremy? Tell us a little bit about how you came to create Lead Quizzes. Um, yeah, so we've been running an agency. I started an agency in college back in uh, 2012. And... The long story short is we started doing like web development. So we started doing that and hiring people to, to build it and managing the whole process. And so um, we got good at that. We started getting, I think, up to maybe we were doing twenty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 sites at the time. But we started getting a lot of feedback from our customers around, um, well, where are our leads and our sales? Well, we were just building the website. So we thought, let's get into marketing. We started doing a recurring business model with that. We were charging monthly retainers. And about the point we got to lead quizzes is uh, we were scaling that agency. We were charging anywhere between 3,500 to 10 grand a month. Um, but we were doing a lot of custom work and we didn't really have a great like lead generation source for ourselves. So we were taking on all different types of clients, um, whether they wanted a webinar funnel, they wanted us to set stuff up in Infusionsoft for them. We, they wanted us to run ads. And so um, it was hard to get really predictable and repeatable results all the time for people. And so about 2015, we lost three clients that accounted for about 35% of our monthly revenue. Um, so that hurt quite a bit. And we went from having really healthy profits to five figure losses. And so we ended up losing about a hundred thousand um, dollars within the next few months because we held on to some employees that uh, I now learned we should have let go sooner um, or have had a better like lead generation system and process to replace those clients we lost. So um, yeah, kind of some of the things that we wanted to change. We wanted to be control, in control of our own lead generation. We want to be able to get consistent results for our clients. We wanted to productize our service. Um, and yeah, we wanted to be able to create a business that, that could scale. So we started looking around at which of our clients had the most success. And one of them we looked at was this uh, hormone doctor. Um, so her name was Dr. Tammy. She was based out of Seattle. And She's helping people in person, but wanted to go online and have a bigger impact on, on women's hormone health. Uh, she was coming out with a book and didn't really have an email list, didn't really have a good way to launch that, that book and get it out there. So we decided to take a quiz, advertise it on Facebook. And what happened was we got about 35,000 leads for her in six months at about, I think it was 19 or 20 cents a lead or something. It was really, really cheap. And so um, she ended up becoming a bestseller. She has a much bigger impact. She makes a lot more sales online. And so we thought that was pretty incredible. And we wanted to figure out, can we do this for more people and make this a repeatable process? Um, so yeah, so that's maybe a good stopping point. We can start to go into like how we did that, but that's essentially how we got to creating this agency where we started offering um, quizzes to generate leads for people. I think oh, you're on muted. mute. Here you go. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, we can make sure that we kind of address some of these topics that you guys chimed in there as we kind of go through. Um, yeah, I think that's a great segue. So why don't we just start to teach attendees how they can niche down on their product and audience so that they can create these scalable marketing campaigns like you guys did. Yeah. So I think a lot of like the reason we had success comes in the setup. So I think that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing was really getting it into a niche. Um, for us, uh, we wanted to get into a specific industry first. So we focused on that. We had a lot of like kind of existing clients in the health space. Um, we had a case study under our belt with Dr. Tammy already. Um, but some of the things that this helped with was we kind of took a shotgun approach. We didn't narrow it down extremely focused in the health industry first. Like we had um, health people that were selling information products. We had health people that were selling skincare, like physical e-commerce products. We had people where it was doctors that were... Um, 
selling like, uh, like in-person services locally. And that was worth like thousands of dollars a year. So it was kind of all over the place in terms of sales. But what we were able to get from that was we had clients where we were generating them thousands or tens of thousands of leads consistently, um, you know, 14 cents to 46 cents. So this made it very easy where I could get on a sales call with people and I could say, you know, like, let's talk about your sales conversions and I can figure out if I can help you either get your cost down or increase your conversions because I have all this data on other clients in the health space and I feel really confident we can get results for you. So this was really like the first area of like how productizing down helped us. And we found that um, the next thing was we needed to go deep within like a specific profession. So we found that if we, with the shotgun approach, we had some clients that would last three years and they would spend uh, 36 grand with us where we were charging them a thousand a month, month to month contracts. And then we had other clients that would only last four months and we'd make four grand with them. So there's a huge difference in lifetime value. And the trick that we found to get people to last much longer was to go really deep with the profession. Um, so for instance, what worked really well for us was we'd work with um, naturopathic doctors and we were able to get them like really good results where um, we would run a Facebook ad campaign for them. We could get them a thousand leads a month. We could turn that into about 40 to 60 people requesting consultations and they would close 50% of those people into clients worth about two grand a year. Um, so that process was really predictable. And I think if we'd continued doing our, um, our agency, which we ended up, we used the, our agency to bootstrap our software and then go into our software full time. But I think if I continued down the agency route, I would have just gone super deep and said, we're only working with uh, these naturopathic doctors that have, you know, we have the sales process figured out. So Okay. So what would you say um, to the audience, what the kind of three steps are that companies need to follow to be able to really choose their niche or really niche down in the way you guys discover that kind of niche in the end? I think the first step is really looking at like, do you already have like a niche that you guys are in? Do you have um, anybody that you're getting consistent results with already? Um, if it's in like a specific industry, but you haven't narrowed it down all the way, maybe start to like focus in on the profession or the type of customer that you're helping. Um, like for us in the health space that could break out into doctors, naturopathics, health coaches, nutritionists, gym owners, personal trainers. Like there's a lot of like niching that you can do into that area. Um, but what we did is we didn't have that quite narrowed in yet. So we took the shotgun approach and then we started to focus in on like, we're only going to work with these specific types of people. Okay. Gotcha. And for those companies out there that are really trying to nail their niche right now, how would you say that a company knows when they're on the right track? If they haven't, you know, quite found that pocket, um, how do you know you're going in the right direction and you're not just kind of cutting out a whole bunch of potential opportunities? I think when it starts to get easier to sell, um, and an example is like with the naturopathic doctors, we could go to them and predictably say like, this is how many clients I can get you. This is what it's going to cost. I'm really confident on what the ad costs are going to be. Um, and then you can start to put other stuff in it. Like we can create, you know, email autoresponders that are going to go out to those leads every time that we use with every single client. We can create a sales script that the, the doctor is going to use um, to be able to close those leads from a consultation into a, a paying doctor, we can figure out what the bonuses we should use to really increase conversions on lead capture. Like when you start to niche, you can start to think about all those things. If you don't niche, like which is an issue that we found, like that sales process is completely different from e-commerce uh, health company trying to sell skincare products. So we found really going deep, you can start to focus on that specific client, which helps you get a lot better results for them predictably for multiple clients. And then it's really easy to sell those people. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I think this is a good opportunity to, to chat about one of these questions that I see here. This is from Ashur. Uh, tell us about your very first clients and how you convince them that you're worth their money. So I guess that's a great, that kind of speaks to what we're talking about. Like if they're the right client uh, for you, then you'll be able to do that. So tell us how you guys managed to do that. Um, how we convinced our first clients to pay us. Yeah, and convince them right. of your worth, I suppose. Yeah. So I guess the short, the short answer is we, we made a really compelling offer. We, we created this like case study model of saying, we're going to help you um, build your list or we're going to help you get this result. And normally we would charge $3,500 to set this up and 3,500 a month. And what we said is we're going to do this for 2000 a month. Half of that is your Facebook ads. Um, half of that is our management fee and we'll do the setup for free. 
So we basically created a compelling offer. We used the um, kind of the psychology of a case study so people feel like they're getting a very good deal. Um, and so we just did that. Honestly, we, we busted our ass for a while. Like we, we worked very hard for the money we were earning up front until we really dialed that model in and got really good at what we were doing. Nice. Um, this is another comment from Walid. So that I guess this was when we were asking, what are you looking to learn? And I think this is actually a great segue into our kind of next topic. So Walid saying, I'm looking to create a scalability model for creating an in-demand campaign for, in his particular instance, it's a film uh, in a non-traditional way. But I mean, our next kind of topic is how you created these scalable lead generation engines. So mm. you've kind of, you've nailed your niche um, and now it's time to scale up the marketing campaigns. So you guys created a process uh, to explode leads and sales. So can you please give us the step-by-step -step directions and maybe a couple of examples um, for each of the channels that you guys focused on? Um, and I think yeah. the first one that you guys kind of chatted about was how you create an angle. Yeah, so I think this is this was extremely important because you can do a, as much outreach as you want, but as someone like mentioned, like if you can't get people interested, then it doesn't make it doesn't make sense. So I think this part's really really important to nail first. So like what our angle was was we knew people in the health space they wanted to build a big email list. Like there's a lot of emotional attachment to that. That's how a lot of these like info marketing products and e-commerce companies made money. Um, they could only do some like different affiliate partnerships if they had a big enough list. Like there was kind of like a, you're not really part of the in crowd if your email list isn't big enough. Like there's a lot of emotional um, things around that. And I think like this could be different. Like you could, you could create this angle around like, I'm going to help a clinic add 250 patients this year. I'm going to help a blogger generate an additional 50,000 a month in sales by the end of the year. Like you need it. Like what we did was we tried to create something that was very important, really aspirational over a long period of time so that they're going to invest with us. And we found that they would stay for years because they're really invested in the big picture. Um, and so that was the angle we created. So the next thing that we did was we started with our email list. So we, we didn't have a big email list. It was maybe like a couple thousand people at a time or at this point in time. And basically we took this angle to them. We said something like, uh, you know, what if I told you that anyone could grow their email list to a hundred thousand people in a year, we had some good copywriting, like it, you don't have to have a widely known brand, a ton of website visitors or require you to pull favors and leverage your relationships because we we're going to use Facebook ads. Um, and then we said, who should we pick? Uh, we're looking for like some specific criteria. Um, if you know anyone, could you just please send us their information? name, phone number, what would be, why would you be a good cam candidate yourself or nominate someone else? So we did that and we started getting a ton of response. Um, either people, I think mainly people just like saying I'd be interested in this myself and maybe a couple people where they referred people. So, so that was like, the, that was the first main way. I think you start to leverage like the resources that you already have. Um, the next thing that we did was, uh, well, let's see. Yeah. So I have some examples. So we did that. We had one business that spent 19 grand with us just from our email list, like a single person that responded to that, but we had a lot of people respond. Um, the next thing we did is we went to referrals. So if you're an agency and you have some existing clients, um, or even former clients, this worked really well for us. So we did the same thing. We said, um, you know, we're looking for someone that has, and then we just said like specific criteria that we had that we thought we could be successful with at the time we said a 50 to a hundred dollar product in the health space, we explained the pricing of how it was going to work a thousand dollars a month in Facebook, a thousand dollars in management. We'll set the sales funnel up for free. Um, we kind of explained like leads should cost a certain range because we, we kind of had that idea of how much leads should cost conversions. And we said, you know, we explained the process of how they would be able to get profitable. And anyways, we, we added some urgency. So we sent this out to people. One example of uh, someone that forwarded this, he did a great job of referring us, but he sent it to nine people. He put them all in the email so they could see who it was. He said, I'm sending this to a few friends. You can see your names above. If you're getting this, I think you should pounce on this. I pay Jeremy 3,500 a month to manage our campaigns, read what he's looking for and contact him directly. Have a great day. And so with that, like all the people started responding. I'm interested. I have products that fit this range. Could you give me a call this weekend? Um, and like just ridiculous responses. Like I had one girl say, like trying to convince me when we already had our spots filled. She's like, I'll have your baby if you let me sign up. Um, another guy that was in a conference that like stepped out of the conference to speak to me. So like that's, that's the way wow. you want sales to happen. You want people to be so excited that, that they want to buy. And I think the reason that happened is because 
we created this angle. We created some urgency by saying we're only taking a few people and it's such a compelling offer. And so that email, like we, like looking back years later, what that calculated, that email made us $90,000 from that single person, just from all those clients, not including any referrals that came from those clients that signed up from us. So, um, I think that was a, that was an extremely like compelling and an easy way for us to start getting clients without having, you know, a big budget or anything like that to go out with. Yeah, absolutely. So with success like that, with the kind of referral technique, why did you move into cold outreach? Yeah. So, um, I'll get to that in a second. One thing I think that was also really helpful was we went out to, after we tapped into our email list and into our existing and former clients, we just started messaging people that we knew. So I said the same thing, like, I've got a favor to ask. Did you see this challenge of helping someone grow to a hundred thousand, hundred thousand emails in a year? And then we explained our criteria and then said, do you know anyone that would be a good fit? And so I started doing this to just people that were friends, people that I met at conferences once that I were in the space that might, you know, might uh, make sense for them. And again, I said, I left it with like, did you know anyone that would be a good fit? Because I think that's a lot less threatening than saying, would you be a good fit for this? Um, but it may be unsurprisingly, as a lot of people started saying, this sounds pretty interesting. You know, the first thing that came to mind was that I wanted to do it. And then so we started getting a lot of these responses or people that referred and said, you know, I know this person that did an $11 million launch in this industry, I'll text him now. And so we started getting tons and tons of referrals and tons of people that would sign up that way. And at some point we started, we did tap out like our network of people that we'd message. Um, I was a, a little cautious at first of who we'd send it to. And I kind of overthink it just like if you're a salesperson and you're like wondering, should I call them? Is this the right timing? And once I just cut through that and just started like messaging everybody, that's when it started being uh, really effective. So um, I don't think you have to know people well, as long as it's a really good offer and you're clear on who you're targeting and like who it's for. Um, it's pretty helpful, but we did move into cold outreach next because, um, we just kind of tapped out that referral basis. Makes sense. Um, and tell us about your, your Facebook advertising strategy. That was kind of the next one. Yep. Um, so with Facebook ads, uh, one thing that we did was we went after influencers that had a big audience. So, um, you mentioned Neil Patel and Lewis Howes were people that we worked with at first. So one thing that we did was we reached out to them, we cold contacted them and we said, you know, if we can create a case study with you, um, we'll create a quiz for you for free. We'll set this up, um, with them. They had more website traffic so we could get results pretty quickly. Um, and so they responded and said, sure, that sounds good. So we set that up for Neil. We helped him increase his lead capture by 500% with the quiz and Lewis Howes, I think he increased his email list by 42%. And so what we did from there was we ran ads with their case studies or with their testimonials towards their audience on Facebook and then uh, drove them to either like a quiz where they'd opt in to get like the full case study or a video training where they'd see the whole thing. And that was pretty effective and there was a ton of engagement there. And then we started calling those leads as they would come in every single lead that came in. Nice. And how did you take advantage then of website traffic? Um, so website traffic, like finally, um, we didn't have a lot of website traffic at the time, uh, but we did start putting like lead capture, like our own quiz on our site, exit pop-ups. Uh, we'd make like an announcement bar at the top. You could see with hello bar, our software does this too. Um, that would say like, um, you know, are you interested in generating more leads or whatever the call to action was? Do you want to build your email list by a hundred thousand people this year? Um, do you want to add 30 new clients to your real estate business a year? Like whatever your like main compelling thing is, we drove that to the call to action. Nice. Well, yeah. Thank you for that step-by-step. Step. That's kind of all the different channels that Jeremy and lead quizzes use to explode their leads, explode their sales. Um, and I think it's a great opportunity to get into some Q and a, um, I see a question here, uh, may you copy and paste here the compelling message. So I imagine that you've got that somewhere. If you can throw that in the Slack community when you have a chance, that would be amazing. So we'll get that to you. That's to ML Zora, I believe okay. how you pronounce that name. Um, we've got a question here from Angela. Uh, any insight into developing a productized solution for B2B clients? It sounds like your targets are B2C. Um, well, I was selling to businesses still, like a lot of those clients were B2C, but I was selling to businesses. If you could give like a specific example, we could probably um, discuss it. Okay, well then why don't we get Angela to pop that in the Slack as well. Angela, you can, you can chat one-on-one -on -one with Jeremy there and you guys can get a little bit more in depth. 
Um, we've got a question here from Danielle Smith. Uh, how can you productize a service-based org that provides custom software builds in the six to seven figure range? Obviously super long sales cycle there, um, but how do you keep momentum and engagement going? For example, what's the product you can offer while recording prospects and re-engaging current clients for resale? Yeah, um, I think that's, it's a little bit tricky if you do custom stuff, but one thing that helped me with the sales process is I would sell a consultation up front because I hated the whole proposal process of going back and forth and saying, you know, here's how much stuff costs, here's what's included, and then you negotiate and take things out or, you know, like have to go back and forth with that. So what I like to do in terms of at least productizing the first step was we would do a $5,000 consultation this was prior to a lot of the stuff that we did, but it worked pretty well. We did a $5,000 consultation. And then if they signed up with us, up with us as a client afterwards, we, we would even like, sometimes we included, let them like roll that into their price. So we'd subtract the five grand from the bill that it was. Um, not always, but I think that's a, a more compelling way to do it. But we had probably a 90% close rate of people that went through to the consultation. I think it's also a good way to get rid of the tire kickers. Nice. Okay, next question is from Sheetal. How have you shaped your product's price? How do you settle on uh, what has been a right price and how important has that been in securing successful large sales? Yeah. Um, well, I think for us, like it made sense where we just, we, we decreased our price at first. So um, we were trying to charge, you know, like this $10,000 a month and that was working well. But what we found was we were able to offer a lower price product but we were able to productize stuff. So like when we would create this quiz funnel where it would be like the quiz start page, the quiz questions, the quiz opt-in, the quiz thank you page, this stuff, like at first it was taking us a couple of weeks to get it out. We started like using our software and a better onboarding process and we could get basically a quiz written and everything turned around in like a couple of weeks. So um, from my, th I think it, it was taking us maybe a month or two to do this before we got it down to a couple of weeks. And so, um, as, as you get better at like doing your, your process, like if you, you can offer for a lower price. So I guess that's what we did first. We wanted to do a lower price, get a lot of clients in, get a lot of experience, and then you can start to raise your price and kind of really figure out what's the best, most profitable price point. Um, so we did experiment with that, um, in the sales process and looked at just like, what was our close rate? How long did we actually keep those customers? Um, and that kind of thing. Got it. Um, our next question from Angela Hood uh, regarding niche. So they sell to employers, recruiters. Would you recommend that they identify the niche, I guess, kind of further narrow that niche by size of company, by industry or both? Um, well, I think like if you're just going after like helping recruiters, I think that's a really good first start. And then you just can kind of like see who are the most successful people that you have on the product and like who are the, the easiest to work with clients and kind of narrow down from there who you like to work with. I guess it, it starts to get to preference, but I think the more narrow you can be and if the market is large enough for that, um, I, would, I would recommend continuing to niche down. Makes sense. Any kind of tips maybe beyond uh, just Angela and her niche, but for anyone out there, just kind of like top things to identify um, when looking to narrow that further? Um, I think at the end of the day, like you need people to write checks and that's how you like figure out if people are going to like, if it's a good niche or not. So um, I think before doing the outreach, if you can spend a lot of time thinking about what's the angle or the really compelling thing that you're going to help people achieve and then how can you how can you make that offer compelling? Like I, I look at four things when we make a compelling offer. First of all, it's something that they should be interested in the first place. That's kind of the angle. Um, then you can have urgency or scarcity. Um, we use that when we went out. Um, you can have bonuses that you offer. Um, and then you can have uh, risk reversal. So I look at kind of like packaging that up. I think the offer is the big thing. And then just starting to test that with the audience to see do they respond? Are they willing to write, you know, check for you or not? Makes sense. Um, our next one here is from Eid from South Africa. Um, so she's the, the marketing manager of a SaaS company and they've started experimenting with remote selling. What would be your top tips um, maybe regarding social media platforms like LinkedIn because their niche is most, mostly active on LinkedIn? Um. I guess this might be like a kind of a specific question. If you're trying to do like uh, like cold outreach, I think the biggest thing that I found on 
our cold outreach is you want to either have like a very, very targeted, compelling message that you're going to send right off, or you want to start building a relationship with them before you you do any kind of ask. I guess those are the two different things. I've seen it with uh, with like link building that we've done where we do a lot of cold outreach is a little bit different, but we build a relationship first well before asking for anything back from them. Uh, but from the sales perspective, I think if you have that offer really dialed in, like we didn't talk too much about our cold outreach, but what we did was we went through Facebook Messenger at the time um, and we sold a lot of people. Like we built a list of 2000 people. We had a really like short script. Um, so we said like, I found you through this like different summit. We were finding people on online summits we've been working with. And when we name dropped a couple people, we thought they would know. And we said, you know, we're helping them build their list to 100,000 people. Would you be interested in joining them? So with our cold outreach, we first, we, we try to keep it really short and sweet. Um, we got them just to say yes or to respond or ask for more details. And we gave them a little bit more details and said, are you still interested? If they said yes, then we would say, okay, here's our Calendly link to schedule. And so we kind of dialed in that script. We took that process. We outsourced it through like a VA. I hired a guy in the Philippines for a few bucks an hour. Um, and then I would have seven appointments booked on my calendar a day because he would just crank through that stuff way faster than I ever could, um, you know, prospect myself. So that's what I would say. I, I guess I don't know how much what I would recommend in terms of like posting on social, but that's my answer for like outreach. Nice. Um, I think we've got time for a couple more questions. So this one here is from David. So this one uh, is actually adding on to a past question we had from Danielle. So let me just reiterate the kind of thesis of that question. So Danielle's question was the one about how to productize the service-based org that provides the so uh, custom software builds at six to seven figure range. And David's uh, add-on question to that is how would you think that would work for prospects in LATAM and Canada? Um, I mean, I think it'd be the same. Like we, we've closed people all over the world in Australia and UK. I think the process is still the same. Like essentially you want to get people excited about buying from you. And I think the way you hit that is you really think through the angle. You re you think through the emotions, like why do they want this? Um, what's really important. Like I mentioned with the hundred thousand email list, like there's a lot of additional stuff in there that you probably wouldn't know unless you knew that market really well. Like the fact that there's kind of this in crowd of the successful people in that space. And then the out crowd of people that don't have a hundred thousand, you know, person email list, they can't participate in these affiliate summits or whatever, where they're going to get their name out more. So really figuring out what that angle is first and then wrapping a compelling offer around it. And then I think a lot of times at that point, the script is easy. Um, I just go for engagement first. We did test like trying to just throw up everything on them where we're like, this is what we're trying to do. Here's all the details. Is that something you're interested in? Then go for immediately for the schedule. And we got a lot, a lot less response. So I think um, similar to why quizzes are effective, you engage people with questions before asking for their, their email and their name. Um, we use that same process with outreach. We just did simple engagement, kept it really short and brief to grab their attention and then gave them a little more and pushed them to the, the sales call. Okay. And okay, we'll do one more. Um, this one is from Anonymous and this one is sort of uh, geared towards that lead generation, sales generation funnel that we talked about near the end of uh, the conversation. So the question is, hello, Jeremy, can you speak a little towards lead volume versus lead quality? Um, they've been successful in generating leads through Facebook and with that, their sales team is spending more and more time qualifying discovery uh, disproportionately versus closing conversation and pitches as the volume increases? Yeah, it's a good question. We dealt with this quite a bit. And, and I mean, I can talk about this personally, how it worked for us as well as our clients. So an example with, uh, I think, first of all, you have leads that are different. Like you have leads that are ready to buy already. You know, you have leads that are just like, they just found out about what you're doing. And so like, they're just kind of understanding maybe that they have a problem you have people that understand a problem and they're looking for a solution um, so there's people all over that spectrum. I think there's also catching people at the right time where they're motivated. Um, so there's just a handful of it. So personally, um, what I liked was to capture a lot of leads. So with these doctors, for example, we'd capture a thousand leads from the quiz and then we'd get 40 to 60 people saying like they wanted the consultation and get on a call um, or go in person with them. So I think um, it's good to try and push people right after you get their lead uh, to see if you can get them to go to a, a consultation page, like on a thank you page. So they opt in. And then the next step is like, would you like to get on a call with someone and you can bonus and incentivize that where they want to do that. And then, but you still have the emails where you can continue to market to them and warm them up and get them used to your brand 
and nurture them before they're ready for that step. So um, that's usually what we did in terms of how we sold our our customers because we were getting a lot of leads as well. Um, honestly, we just called every single lead. Like we did have, um, I think if we were selling a much higher priced product, you can qualify people. And we did that with a quiz where they would tell us stuff like how much website traffic they have, their email list size, how much do they want to advertise? Because we, we, we would do quizzes like, our quiz is right for you. And then we'd ask all these qualifying questions. So that's one way that you can get a lot of that information up front if you really want to target it. Um, but oftentimes what we found, like when, when we were selling a lower price thing, like a thousand dollars a month, it was pretty affordable for most people. We just called every single lead that we could and we'd call them, I think five or six times. Um, and then as long as we could get them engaged, like it, uh, that's usually what it came down to. We found, we found it hard to get on calls with everybody if they don't want to, but if you can put this really compelling offer in front of them or you can catch them in the middle of their day and then you have a good sales script to just jump right into things, um, that worked pretty well for us. Nice. Well, thank you so much for answering all those questions. Um, for anybody that didn't uh, get their question answered, you can go ahead and throw that in that Slack channel. Um, if you haven't already kind of accessed it, check your email, you'll have access to it there. Jeremy will be hanging out and answering your questions. And thank you to Jeremy for sharing how you productized your agency and sold 189 clients in two years. Thank you to all of our attendees for, for joining in. Um, Jeremy, how can people get in touch with you if they want to know more? Um, the probably go to, community. <laughs> yeah, leadquizzes.com or like uh, Jeremy Allen's on LinkedIn. And uh, I wrote a blog post on this that's like 17,000 words. There's no lead capture on it, so you can just read it for free. Um, and so I'll throw that in the Slack if you guys want to see the sales scripts and all of that stuff that we put in there. Awesome. And if any of you are eager to learn more about uh, how lead quizzes can help you guys generate leads and learn more about your audience, you can go there too to learn more about that. Um, for those of you who are sticking around for the next session, um, in about 15 minutes, or I guess about 10 minutes now, 9.45, we've got Dan Martell on positioning your SaaS product. And if we want to get Colin back in the action here, he can talk about what's going to happen in between and the, the uh, Twitter feed, or not Twitter, Twitch, Twitch feed and all Twitch that. Twitch feed. There we go. Yeah. All right. And uh, apologies if anybody heard any guitar playing in the background. I was listening in and I thought I had muted myself, but I had muted on Twitch, but not on Zoom. And uh, I was just practicing my scales. So I apologize if, if any of that was coming through. I'm uh, really sorry there. Just a nice uh, little background serenade. Yeah, te technology. <laughs> <laughs> Me screwing up the same link over and or the same link over and over and over again. Um, so yeah, uh, Jeremy, that was awesome. Um, I was reliving parts of the, uh, of the podcast that we did together because we did... Uh, um, you know, Jeremy came on the show and did a great episode with us where we went a little bit deeper into some of the things that they did in growing that. And we got a little bit more into the story. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Um, if we are, so I think a couple things for people hanging out. Um, we've got Dan Martell coming up next at 945 Pacific. Um, after that, we've got Jamie Buss and uh, Jamie at 1030. Um, Jamie's, so Dan is, he's over at... Well, he's, he does a bunch of different things. He's one of the original founders of Clarity, um, but he's he's an investor. He has his own SaaS academy. Um, he's you know he does the rocket demo. Um, Jamie's the VP of Sales over at Zendesk. Um, she's been on our show a couple of times. She's going to be talking about what makes a great boss. So I highly recommend um, hanging around for both of those. Um, we got a little break at 11 o'clock to 11.30 Pacific where it's just going to be Sarah and myself hanging out, having a chat about what we've seen so far and what's coming up next. Um, and then this afternoon, uh, we've got, we actually have uh, a round table. We've got some networking. We've got, we're talking about people talking about how to sell remotely um, in times uh, like in COVID. We're going to be talking about building a personalized playbook with Beck Holland. Um, we've got a really cool one coming up with the, where is he? Uh, Patrick E. McLean. He's going to be talking about how to hone your pitch. Um, this is a, this is a hilarious one for me because I, it was probably like seven or eight years ago. And I found this, this presentation, it was on one of those like Reddit or Facebook or something. And it was basically uh, kill a word. And he had this, he has this great presentation where he clicks through and there's a slide and it's got a bunch of words on it. And you're like, Oh, I get the message. And then you click the next slide and it has three words and it tells the same message. And it was so impactful. I shared it with the team. I was like, Hey, everybody, we need to, you know, this is a really great reminder. We need to get, you know, skinny with our messaging. Um, and so we've got Patrick coming up a little bit later this afternoon. Um, and so, 
Um, a couple things I wanted to share. We've got the Twitch stream. If you don't want to jump from Zoom to Zoom, um, if you do want to and you have registered, uh, then feel free to check out the uh, check out your email because I believe Hey Summit will be emailing, sending you emails with here's the Zoom link. Uh, so you're welcome to jump on Zoom. You're welcome to hang out on Twitch. Um, Sarah I, and I are going to be live the whole time. And uh, if you're on Zoom, you get this funny, weird view with myself, Jeremy, Sarah, and then Infinite Collins. Um, if you're on Twitch, you just see that regular regular view. Um, so that's what's coming up at uh, 9.45 is Dan Martell, and he's going to be talking about how to position your SaaS product. Perfect. Jeremy, uh, thanks so, so much for, for coming on today. Um, you know, if people want to reach out, you're going to be in Slack. Cool. We'll throw your LinkedIn in Slack. So if anybody wants to, uh, to connect with you or check out lead quizzes, they can do that. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Right on, man. Thanks for coming on.